This training video series will cover an introduction to the system, preparation, application, how to check impedances, troubleshooting and additional tips, and device breakdown. Before preparing the participant, refer to the manual to ensure that all necessary equipment is readily available. Please note that 70% isopropyl alcohol swabs are also necessary. However, this is not included with your device kit. Please be advised, modifications to instructions may lead to negative effects on system performance. Practice setting up the device and familiarizing yourself with the system. Learning the system on official participants is not recommended. In order to properly match the participant's head to a strip size, you will need to make the necessary measurements. When the participant is ready and seated, take the measuring tape and measure over the center of the scalp from the nasion, which is at the bridge of the nose between the eyebrows, to the occipital protuberance, which is at the protruding bump on the occipital bone. To do this, first locate the occipital protuberance by asking the participant to gaze upwards. Begin at the nape of the neck and slowly walk your fingers from the bottom of the participant's head upwards until you've reached the slight bump on the back of the skull. Take note that the bump will vary in prominence and size across participants. Next, locate the nasion and measure over the midline of the participant's head, ending at the bottom of the occipital protuberance. Record the values. The second measurement requires that you measure laterally from the top of the ear attachment on the left side of the head to the top of the ear attachment on the right side of the head. Record the values. Your recorded measurements for both nasion to occipital protuberance and top of ear attachment to the head from one side to the other will help determine participant's strip size. The strip sizing chart provided will help you determine participant strip size. Find your recorded nasion values on the y-axis and the top of ear attachment values on the x-axis. Locate the point where the two values intersect, as this will determine the appropriate strip size. However, if the participant's measurements fall within the red highlighted range, measure the head circumference as a third measurement to confirm the strip size. If the circumference measures less than 56 centimeters, use the small strip. If the circumference measures less than 52 centimeters, use the extra small strip. Once the circumference value is determined, check the bottom of the sizing chart to select the appropriate strip. Size is indicated near the connector on the labeled side of the strip. Check the strip for any damages, including creases, tears, or excessive wear from previous use. These types of damages will not immediately affect data quality, but should be noted so replacement strips can be ordered before your current strips begin to fail. Lay the selected strip on a flat surface so that the labeling is not seen and the sensor pads are exposed. First, attach the neoprene head strap to the sensor strip. Place the head strap with the looped or fuzzy side of the strap facing down. With the strip still facing upside down, carefully feed the triangular tip on the strap through the hole on the front of the strip. Center the strip and firmly press down the Velcro to set its position. Once the strip is secured to the strap, feed each Velcro end of the strap through the appropriate slot on the strip arms. Next, apply the adhesive foam sensors to the strip. Using the black circle surrounding each site as a placement guide, affix one foam sensor to each of the 20 sensor sites on the strip. Place foam sensors so that the blue tabs are aligned with the strip, making for easier removal after the data acquisition. Gently apply pressure to the foam sensors to ensure they properly adhere to the strip. Fill the cream application syringe with Synapse Cream using the 5 ounce bottles. The syringe should be filled approximately halfway. Insert the plunger and remove air for cleaner applications. An efficient way to manually prep foam sensors is to first fill the centers of all 20 sensor sites. With the flat surface of the syringe, gently press on each sensor site to allow sensor foams to absorb as much cream as possible. Refill the center of each sensor site and repeat these steps one to two more times. Wipe the participant's head with an alcohol swab, making broad and thorough strokes across the scalp, all temporal sites including the forehead and the mastoid bone sites behind the ear, taking care not to cause physical distress to the participant. The alcohol swab is used to remove dirt, natural oils, and hair product residue. This helps reduce impedance values between the scalp and sensor sites. We recommend asking the participant prior to the data acquisition session to refrain from using any hair products, as this is a major cause for high impedances. 
Before continuing, ensure the skin has dried up at the mastoid sites. For easier placement and improved participant comfort, use scissors to cut down the size of the two adhesive mastoid electrodes. It is recommended to prepare these in advance and have them ready before the participant arrives. Peel off the paper to expose the adhesive. Apply a small dab of cream on the center of the electrode, then apply them to both mastoid bone sites. Proper mastoid placement is critical, so take care to feel for the bony area behind the ear and avoid the hair and muscle for optimal data quality and comfort. Note that the mastoid electrodes should be placed behind both ears and are not side dependent. While standing behind the participant, ask them to lean their head slightly backwards. Place the strip and strap on the participant's head, just above the brow bone, aligning the triangular piece of the neoprene strap with the participant's nasion. While holding both sides of the neoprene strap, ask the participant to gently hold the connector in front of his or her face while you fasten the strap behind the circumference of the participant's head. After tightening it to a comfortable and snug fit, check both sides to ensure the strap sits just above the top of the participant's ears. Double check that the triangular tab is centered to the participant's nasion. Next, take the green strip connector from the participant and bring it up and over the top of the participant's head. Lightly fasten the two furthest back strip tabs down onto the strap at the same time. This will keep the strip in place while you add more cream to the sensor scalp sites for each of the temporal sensors. It is now a good time to ask the participant if the fit is comfortable. It should be snug but not too tight, similar to a fit of a bicycle helmet. To ensure low impedance values, part the hair and expose the scalp to the foam sensors and fill the center of the foam again with synapse cream on all temporal sites, including the forehead. Once all eight temporal sites have good direct contact with the scalp, begin fastening the strip arms. Start from the front and move towards the back, pulling the arm pairs towards the participant's ears and fastening them to the neoprene strap. The foam sensor should lay flat against the participant's head. For the third arm set with the P3-P4 sites, prioritize flat sensor placement and affix them either slightly forward or back to find the best fit. Once all the strip arms are fastened to the strap, ensure that all foam sensors are lying flat against the head and are slightly compressed. Please note that excessive pressure can have negative effects on both signal quality and participant comfort. Ideal fit of the strip is achieved when all arms converge at the same point. It is now time to refill and position the remaining foam sensors on top of the parted hair to give the best scalp to sensor connection. One at a time and working front to back, let the strip arms to the corresponding sensor site, part the hair with a syringe and fill with synapse cream. You are now ready to apply the device. With the device in your hand, remove the door by unlocking the two latches. Hold the device with the USB facing up and flip the strip upwards. Align the connector with the underside of the device. Carefully and firmly connect the two pieces. Place the door back onto the device ensuring both latches lock. Connect the linked mastoid leads to the three pin connector on the device. If you are using the ECG leads, connect them to the 2-pin connector opposite to the mastoid leads. Slip the small neoprene strap through the clear plastic loop with the fuzzy or velcro side facing away from the participant's head. Holding the two ends of the small strap, flip the device downwards so it's right side up. Attach the velcro on the device to the other neoprene strap on the participant's head. Move the device slightly to the right in order to minimize bending of the strip. Ensure that the strip is laying flat on the head and is not creased in any areas. Connect the linked mastoid leads to the mastoid electrodes behind the participant's ears. If you are using the ECG leads, ask the participant to wipe their clavicle or collarbone on their left and right side with an alcohol swab. Attach electrodes to the end of the ECG lead cables. Beginning with the lead connector, colored blue, peel off the backing of the electrode to expose the adhesive side. Fill the center with a dab of synapse cream and adhere it to the participant's left clavicle bone. Follow these steps for the gray lead cable connector adhering to the right clavicle bone. A good way to remember the side-dependent ECG connector placement is with a mnemonic device. Blue goes to the left side. Both blue and left have the letter L for left side. Likewise, both gray and right have the letter R for the right side. Depending on your equipment, attach the Bluetooth dongle or ESU to the USB port on the computer you will be using to acquire data. 
Turn the device on by pressing the button located on the top left corner of the device. The indicator on the receiver will change to a solid green light once the device has established connection. Performing an impedance check is a systematic method to ensure good contact across all sensor sites. Impedance measures the amount of resistance at each sensor site and is presented in kilo ohms. Lower values reflect better connections. Higher values or values out of range means there's a bad connection or it is non-existent. After the check is completed, use the impedance values and the color coding to identify sensors on the head that may need adjustments. To begin, click the test impedance icon on the software interface and input the necessary information. For more details on how to launch the software that you'll be using, please watch Software Use and select the appropriate software for your study. The software is set to provide general color-coded guidance of the device connectivity. Red signifies values above 80 kilo ohms, yellow if between 40 and 80 kilo ohms, and green if less than 40 kilo ohms. Reference impedances are measured at the mastered bone site. If the reference channel in the impedance check is colored yellow or red, it will negatively impact all channels. In order to proceed with data collections, we recommend that all impedance channels, including the reference, are lower than 40 kilo ohms, as indicated by numerical values and green impedance coloring across all EEG channels. Some potential issues that you may experience include high reference impedances, high impedance values for all channels, and high impedance values for specific channels. For high impedance values of all channels, first troubleshoot the references. For high reference impedances, remove the linked mastoid leads and electrodes Rewipe the area with an alcohol swab and allow skin to dry. Make sure that the electrodes have a small dab of cream in the center before reapplying to the mastoid sites. Also, be sure to clear the area of any hair that may be in the way before you rerun your impedance check. You may need to replace the mastoid electrodes if the adhesive has worn. If high impedances persist, locate the specific channels that appear red or yellow on the impedance check. Lift the strip arm tabs if necessary to access the sensor and use the tip of the syringe to part the hair and expose the scalp where the sensors rest. Add more synapse cream to both the foam sensor and the scalp site. You may need to rewipe this area with an alcohol swab, then refill with synapse cream. If you observe that the strip arms are too tight or that it is difficult to get particular sensors to lie flat, you may need to check the strip size measurements or troubleshoot other steps of the setup. Ill-fitted equipment could cause the strip to ride up on the participant's head, causing the foam connectors to disconnect from the scalp. Remember that impedances will decrease over time, so rerunning an impedance check without troubleshooting may result in lower values. If no amount of troubleshooting seems to change impedance values, the strip sensor may be damaged or at the end of its useful life. The guaranteed useful life of a strip is 25 recordings, but will generally last longer with proper treatment, cleaning, and storage. Tip 1. Participants with longer hair should let their hair down before application. Once application of the system is complete, they may loosely tie their hair back. Ask the participant to keep their hair off of their forehead when applying the strap. Do not attempt to part the hair along the midline, as this will often make applying the system more difficult. After fitting the strap and strip to the participant and checking to confirm the system is properly aligned, the participant may loosely tie their hair back. For optimal data quality, Route linked mastoid leads around or through the participant's hair to avoid tugging, pulling, or tension on the leads. Any movement of the leads will compromise data quality. Add more synapse cream and repart the hair as necessary to establish good conductivity between the foam sensor sites and the participant's scalp. Tip 2. If the participant is experiencing discomfort to the top of the ear, it can be relieved by placing a foam sensor between the strip and the top of the ear so the strip is resting on the foam. Please note. This is to the discretion of the technician and is not a standard guideline, as additional foam sensors are not given for this purpose. Tip 3. Reduce application time with recurring participants by noting their strip size and pre-filling foam sensors up to 30 minutes before data acquisitions. Please note that any time longer than 30 minutes can cause the synapse cream to begin to dry and cause issues with impedances. When acquisition testing is complete, turn the device off. Carefully remove the adhesive sensors from the ECG clavicle sites and linked mastoid sites or ask the participants to do so themselves for personal comfort. 
Detach all the strip arm tabs from the neoprene strap, starting from the back and working to the front. Unfasten the Velcro tabs that attach the device to the neoprene head strap. Flip the device upside down. Take the Velcro strap from the plastic loop. Unlatch the door on the device and remove. Disconnect the device from the connector carefully so that you do not damage either part. Unfasten the Velcro and lift the strip away from the participant. Lay the strip down on a flat surface. Using the plastic tweezers provided, remove all foam sensors by peeling rather than pulling to ensure no adhesive remains. The quality of the strip will be reduced if adhesive accumulates over time. To properly clean the strip, use an alcohol swab to remove excess cream. Be sure to avoid excessive scrubbing on the sensor sites as this will accelerate wear. Disconnect the neoprene strap from the strip by releasing the Velcro tabs and pulling them through the slots. Remove the neoprene aero tab by gently pulling it through the slot. Hand wash the neoprene head strap with antibacterial soap and allow it to air dry. After the strap has dried, sanitize with an alcohol swab. Over time, the neoprene straps may also need to be replaced. They are included when you order replacement sensor strips. Finally, prepare the system for next recording as desired and ensure your device is fully charged before its next use.